Okay, everyone, uh, welcome back. This is uh, video three in this series that we do that we still don't have a name for. It's something to the effect of either a product roundup or long story short, a video where we hit you with about 10 different products that we've been running that frankly don't make sense to do 20 minute videos on, but no. we just kind of hit you with some quick hot takes on them. Just some um, cool gear, right? I mean, we, we accumulate some cool little knickknacks and gear here and there with what we do and and sometimes um, some not so cool nicknames. And some sometimes some failures, but hey, that's the name of the game. It's the and name of the game. We're nothing but honest, right? If anything, we're honest. Yes. So. And um, I, I'll give you this disclaimer. So this video, um, I don't feel like going through ten different things and what's the relationship with the company because hey, we ain't got time for that. So some of these things were bought, some of these things were given to us. It's just hit and miss. And just so you know, some of the things that were given we don't like, some of the things we paid for we do like. So it's just it's all a fucking mixed bag, okay? So you know we're shooting you straight. And our opinion means jack shit. So yeah, it means jack shit. Um, Thirty second pitch to you guys. Um, if you hate money, you can give it to us at our uh, Patreon page. And uh, we actually just filmed uh, Patreon a couple Patreon things today. Actually, yeah. they're pretty juicy. Um, they're pretty fucking juicy. <laughs> and then, um, you know, if you guys need any real estate help, let us know. Chris is in Arizona, I'm in Utah, and then we got a bunch of agents and shit all over the freaking country. A lot of mill LE clients, yada, yada, yada. Agents or Asians? Agents. Okay. okay. It sounded like you said we got a bunch of Asians all over the country. Well, they could so. be Asian also. I I'm not know. saying they're not, but you meant agents as real estate agents. Asians. Okay. You see what I say? It just kind of blurs together and you don't know what I say. Yeah, I mean, you are from West Virginia, right? So fuck you, English man. is bad. Us from Virginia, we don't really acknowledge the state of, of West Virginia. Sorry, West Virginia, but we don't really play that game with Not you guys. Not a lot there. Okay, so let's go. First product here. We've got the um, the Lantac Bolt Carrier Group. You just kind of hold and model this shit, okay? It, it's, a, it's a bolt carrier group, so there's really not much for you to see here. It's um, in there. <laughs> yeah, so there's not going to be a ton to see, but... This was a product that I'm interested in. Hey, Finn, get away from the tripod, please. Thank you. Um, so here's the deal. So uh, I, uh, we, you know, mutually know people that uh, are, are pretty adamant about running these things in guns, especially specific types of guns, which I'll give you here in a second. And um, so essentially, it's like a super Gucci, high-end, very, very tough bolt carrier group. Okay. Um, I've had some contact with. Uh, one of the guys over at Lantac, and so here's the Cliff Notes version of this. Really designed for either like overgassed, shorty, or suppressed guns, which are guns that the bolt carriers are, are gonna take a shit ton of abuse, okay? So basically these are meant to really be designed for those guns that are gonna take a lot of abuse, okay? A lot of actual science that goes behind these. I'm just gonna give you an excerpt from the website just so you have a sense for what I'm talking about. Tell me if you understand any of this. Our BCG is precision machined from 8620 steel, big proponent. Um, means it was machined very precisely. With a shot peened bolt manufactured from Carpenter 158 and magnetically particle inspected. Fuck, you, you know you don't know what any MPI, of that is. MPI, I do. Oh, I know what yeah. the MPI is. You don't know what any of this is. He doesn't know what any of this is, but what it does. They shoot magnetic particles into it or around it to find any crevices, cracks, or any basically flaws in the metal itself that they can then find, either fix or just throw away and get a new one. Okay, that's better than I expected you to do on that. Dude, I'm a fucking genius. I play dumb so you don't give me more responsibility. Right, right. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna help uh, a little bit with gas mitigation back to the shooter's face. So I specifically threw the bolt carrier group in a 10.5 that I largely run suppressed, AKA a gun that's gonna, you know, it, like it's a pretty heavy hitting gun on a bolt carrier group. I did actually notice that it, it does do that a little bit in terms of reducing gas. It's not going to be a game changer, but hey, especially if you're a lefty, definitely worth considering. It's more effective in terms of gas reduction than some of those like um, charging handles yeah. that have the slot. Like those don't really do shit for me um, from my perception. But uh, I did actually notice it, it helped a little bit with that. They uh, do have some different finishes. So this one's black nitride. I think you've got a black nitride one too, yeah. if I remember right. Um, they do have a TIN version, titanium nitride version. Did you know what TIN stood for? Yeah, titanium nitride. Yeah, but I just said that. Yeah, I knew I just it said before it, you did because my type A is tin coated. Yeah, 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 but I taught, I also taught you, I taught all that Jeez, to you. Um, Keep going. And they've also got a nickel boron version that that's just cool. Um, what what does it do that's different? I don't I don't know, but nickel boron's cool and it sounds cool. Really, let's be honest. Um, lifetime warranty. Um, here's what here, here was kind of the the end all be all line that I thought summed up these things. Uh, and this is from the guy at Lantech. He goes, "It's not cheap, but they don't break." And I'm like, 
That sums it up super well. So they're like, like 290 it. bucks. Look, it is a Gucci high-end, very expensive bolt carrier group. But again, depending on the gun, it th this goes in my winner's list yeah. for the day. Like yeah. this goes in my winner's list. I liked it. I've been running on that gun and it's super, super cool. Our mutual friend that runs these shoots a lot and yeah. has nothing but good luck with them, so. Yeah, and, and I, the only other thing I would say, look, it, it, it is a product that can only truly be evaluated with a lot of time and rounds. Yeah. That's the only way you really find out the true story, but my experience thus far has been super positive. This little one. guy, so uh, backstory behind this, uh, it's a little G10, little shank, if you wanna call it. Nasty. From Black Triangle Group. Um, they make all G10, all everything. So, why is that important? I know why. If you're in an austere environment, got to go through metal detector. Mm -hmm. This will not set off the metal detector. By the way, we're not encouraging this. Okay, this is not legal advice. No, it's just a fact of the of G10. It won't show up on a metal detector. That's this it. This is correct. Um, I picked one of these up because we recently did a trip down to Mexico, and uh, can get a little dicey down there. Can so. When I was drinking uh, Mai Tais by the pool, this was in my board shorts the whole time. Just yep. in case shit got a little dicey in the pool, you know. Um, but Black Triangle Group, uh, this one has a little bit of wear and tear on it because my cute as hell Corgi puppy mm. got a hold of it and chewed the shit out of it. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, she didn't get the knife itself, which is fine. But Probably um, better that your dog didn't chew on a knife. Yeah, I mean, it would have been her fault, right? So... But uh, I like it, you know, I, again, I got it for uh, going to Mexico and, you know, swam with it and all that good stuff, so. It's pretty cool. And it, I mean, again, very niche. That's yeah. probably not gonna be your daily EDC knife, but you know, depending on yeah. travel, whatever, you, whatever rabbit hole you guys wanna go down. Well, and you can, you can. this is just uh, shot quarter on, so you can change how the it rides. Mm. I put it horizontal through a belt loop, so, draw it. No, dude, that's good. It's yeah. it's like super fucking, your <coughs> combatives are, are really spot on. That's what would have happened just in Mexico, by it. the way. Is the, the just fucking, fumbled it the, some server, cartel guys the server like, would have come up. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, a gold-plated AK is coming out. <laughs> so, yeah, Liberace's Chris. AK, right? So, yeah. I don't know, I, I picked this up in conjunction with the next product that I'm going to talk about. Yeah, good. Rhino laces. Hit it. So, why are shoelaces more important aftermarket than the ones that come on your shoes? This company right here, Rhino Laces, was made by two guys who were wildland firefighters. Okay. And with the ash and all that stuff, you know, embers that get on their boots, they're running through laces a ton, so they wanted to make bomb-proof laces. Hmm. I was turned on to these, though, because a guy on, I want to say it was a YouTube video, had these laces faked like he got kidnapped and was <coughs> zip, zip cuffed, you know? Yeah. And with these laces, because they're so robust, you can cut through zip ties with them which is kind of cool. Again, I got these for Mexico, just in case I got zip tied and kidnapped. Yep, next thing you know, you're Liam Neeson on the set of Taken. That's it. And you're just- yep. With my rhino laces. Yep, so. and your G10 knife. And these per like weight are stronger than steel by itself. Huh. And it is like, it's something like three times stronger than Kevlar, the way oh, they make shit. it. So, their website's super cool. It has a breakdown of all the like scientific data behind these, okay. which is really cool. But uh, I mean, it's been on the Science Channel, Esquire. Uh, they've been in like crate, Cosmo, Crate Club. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, supermodels need these. But um, I got these for boots. You know, obviously, you cool. can throw them in vans, whatever you want. Yeah. But if you need robust shoelaces, Rhino laces. Legit. Okay. Legit. Um, let's see. I'll bust out a couple. So this is uh, no nothing new. Something I've had for quite a while now. Which is a uh, Emerson uh, Karambit. I don't. I can't even remember the exact model, which doesn't matter. You guys can go figure it out. But um, <laughs> this is a cool little pocket knife that I carried for a long time. This would normally run on on this side for me, but um, I've got a holster here now, so I'll just kind of mimic what this thing is designed to do. So basically, it's going to be down in. Uh, a pocket the way that they designed the little hook on these is basically that hey look you get your finger inside that you apply a little like pressure that direction as you come out so that oh. your blade deploys obviously your blade will be coming out like that so you're gonna have to get your grip back but look it is a cool the way they designed these hooks it's a really cool little nifty thing where it essentially just clips into a pocket you come out obviously you've got a blunt force tool there if you didn't have blade and you're just trying to you know 
deter someone with a yeah. little bit of a blow or something like that. But um, it is a cool blade. I know there's mixed thoughts in terms of karambits and all that kind of stuff, but it's a knife I've had for quite a while and really like, so I figured we blend it into this. Well, and you told me the backstory behind karambits, which if you want to give that story again, like yeah, so why I, they were made. Well, so what, what I was told, and I have no reason to assume it's not true, but it was more as like for like uh, fishermen that essentially, not so much on, on this blade, but basically, they would be, uh, you know, working on like cutting nets or whatever, right? So they're they're working with their knife, and then they need to free up their hands, right? So they would. This knife is set up different, but essentially that ring would act so that they can work with their hands, do their stuff, and then you would be flipping the the knife back in to cut the net again. This one obviously designed a lot more for defensive purposes, but um, another one that I've got that story with the fish thing totally makes sense once you see that one. Yeah. Um, these are thick. That'd probably be about the only con to it. It's a beefy knife, but. Again, a knife that I have liked quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, this is a break uh, from a company called X2 Development, uh, which is local here in Utah. And um, I, I met them, know them a, a little bit through the grapevine. So essentially the concept of the break is that it is a break versus a flash hider, although supposedly haven't ran this low light, no light. Apparently helps with flash as well. Can't confirm or deny that. Uh, there's some good flash coming out, I think, when yeah, I was shooting. I can't say, you know, I haven't, you know, done my due diligence on that. But essentially a break that is going to give you the benefit of a break in terms of recoil reduction and flatter gun and all that kind of shit, but without the concussion for your neighbor, and you'll see the channels on these kind of push all that concussion forward. Uh, does it work great? <laughs> like it, 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 you know, like a little bit of a tough one, especially when companies are local and then I know them. It's like uh, it's not the most fun thing to say, but it's not the not not the most effective. It, I would say it's marginally a little better than like a standard break, like surefire, yeah, air. that any of us would run. Which obviously there's a lot of concussion on those, but does it do a phenomenal job of pushing it forward? No. Um, Say another little bit of a problem they're 150 bucks so like it's a very expensive break and depending on my theory and the reason i added this and wanted to test this is because someone asked me once they're like well what if you wanted a break but you weren't worried about running a suppressor what would you get and i'm like oh this could be kind of cool it doesn't take a suppressor it's just a break but i thought it was going to channel concussion forward does not do a phenomenal job of that um so you know that's just kind of the, the way the cards fall sometimes it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes so there's that. Let's see, what else do we have coming up here? We've got, uh, I'm gonna talk about your little watch there. Yeah, so I am gonna dedicate a little bit of time to this. So, sure. been on a little bit of a watch kick lately, kind of spurred on by our other video where we talked about the Aries watch, uh -huh. right? I'm on a little dive watch kick. This is a cool little company called Sangin Instruments, if you've heard of it. Sangin is also in Afghanistan, or is it Iraq? It's over in that part of the country somewhere. A lot of fighting and unfortunately a lot of, uh, a lot of US soldiers uh, lost their lives in Sangin, unfortunately. Um, reason why I'm talking about that, the watch is named after that because the guy who started this company was a Marine Special Operations guy. Mm -hmm. And okay. wanted a watch that he could wear in the field that's heavy duty, robust, but also he could put a suit on later that day and go to like an, a meeting with an ambassador with the same watch. So, um, what's this little doily here on the watch? It's a compass, it's a compass. Jake. It's a compass do I know how to do land nav? No. Not even in the fucking slightest. No. But he also makes these dope little compasses for his watches. I like it. And, excuse me, kind of like a rifle, I was like, dude, I got to build it. I got to have all the pieces. So kind of a cool little watch, um, rotating bezel, all that good stuff. Crown's in a different position so it doesn't hit you when it's at the three. Um, this is one of like six or seven models that he has. I Bezel. like it. Oh, I, I, I like it quite a bit. Yeah. I think it's a very cool watch. Good weight. Uh, this was like a... It's right here. You're good. This was like a little present that I got for myself for a couple goals I accomplished. I ordered another one, hmm. another model, which will be here in August. And then I'm probably buying another one next month for my birthday. So, cool. Um, they'll run anywhere from 595 to 700 depending on the model, which is fair, I think. I like um, it. I, I think it's a very... Uh, in turn, you know, I used to be a little bit of a watch whore. Um, yeah. And... Um, I like it. I'm a, I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm a fan. I, you know, I, I threw a NATO strap on it. It comes with their NATO strap as well as a leather band, uh -huh. which is kind of cool. You can switch them out. This isn't their NATO strap. It's another company, but, uh, I mean, I think they're just cool, like good looking, hard to use watches. And what's interesting, this might be good for you single guys, far more women compliment me on this watch than men. I'm talking like drastically different hmm. at the shop for whatever reason, 
a lot of women are always like, that is a cool watch. Guys don't tend to notice it for whatever reason. Huh. So if you're trying to get a date, get a Sangin. It's a good. That was a good, good hook, huh, Jake? Good, good, good Jake promo. over at Sangin, if you ever see this, Jake's the owner. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, hey, hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'll hit you with a belt here. Uh, from laziness, I don't feel like taking this off. So belt from a company called Core Essentials. Um, it's basically this ratcheting belt system. It. So you know, I mean, we have a, some companies that will reach out and they're like, hey, you know, what do you think if we send you this thing? I would say it's about 50-50 if we say yes or no. Because if I can already tell I hate something, there's no point in sending it. Because I'm not trying to put out bad. Like, I don't want to put out negative yeah. things. But this was one that we said yes to. I was a little reluctant that it was going to have any place that I found useful for it. And it's actually pretty cool. So it's this ratcheting belt system. They basically, it's a one-size-fits-all belt. So yeah. it comes, the belt is like this giant fucking fat man. Thick gentleman belt. Fat. Okay, that's not what I said. I don't think I said. I don't think I actually said that. They come in like a size 60, don't they? Yeah, they're big. They're big, right? And then For basically, what you do is you you find the place to cut it, okay? And you cut it. So you need some shears. I used uh, a kitchen knife that's very sharp, <laughs> and you cut it. And basically, they send it to you with these like Allen wrenches and shit. And you basically screw it in. Right, and then you you basically design it so it fits perfect for you. You design how much slack and everything you, there is on the back side of it. You'll see the little ratcheting notches here. So the whole idea is honestly pretty simple. And you get to pick which buckle you want. So basically, you're you're getting the belt, then you pick which hardware you want. I told them, hey, look, if you're gonna send it in for the sake of me having a shot at using it, I do not like bulky EDC belts. Yeah. Big buckles, I fucking hate it. Yep. Right. Um, so basically, this is a super minimalist buckle. The thing just goes through, and then you'll hear. You'll hear some ratcheting that's happening there, right? I would just tuck that underneath that belt loop. And then when you want to release it, there's just a little notch that's underneath like there. A little trigger that you pull, Yeah, right? and you literally just push that little notch, <coughs> and then the thing comes apart. It is, I'm just going to be open for the rest of this yeah, segment. Cool. Yeah, um, A little awkward. It's really good. Uh, like, this was one where I was like, oh, thank God. Because I don't like saying, despite what you guys probably think, I don't enjoy s spreading talking negative, shit, yeah. talking shit. And it, it, like this is a nice surprise, actually. It was a, a belt that I thought was pretty damn cool. So those ratcheting belts have been around for a little while, and I've heard the backstory is, for Mormon missionaries, this guy developed those because a lot of missionaries get super fat on their missions, so they wanted a belt that could expand and contract for their fatness. Whoa. That's not a knock on Mormon missionaries. I'm just saying, a lot of them do get fat on their missions. Yeah, well. So that would make sense why you need a ratcheting belt so you can get fatter well, and Well, it's super adjustable. Like, it, like legit, it, it, I quite enjoyed it. And I do uh, actually wear it around sometimes. It's a slick belt. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, gloves? Oh, yeah. You got your gloves? Yeah. Victos. So, these were sent to us by none other than Type A. Just class act guys, man. I never actually noticed that, to be <laughs> honest with you. Are you serious? I thought this was just some random design. No, no. <laughs> Type bad. A sent us these yeah, as a, you know, little swag pack. Um, they're again, they're made by Victos, but they got the Type A brand on it. Got padded knuckles here. Um, they got goat skin right here in the webbing. Yeah, I like goat so skin. So like, uh, you gotta get the drippies off, you know, it's not, not terribly abrasive against your nose. Yeah. Uh, vented palms, which is nice. So especially in like Arizona, these are going to be awesome because yeah. I mean you can see through, you can see your hand underneath the material. Yeah, um, and it, it actually works. Like even out here yeah. today, today's a little chillier. Like I do feel the breeze. A little breeze, a breeze. Room, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, I I would like them to be fit a little more snug because there is a little extra material in places that there doesn't need to be. Uh -huh. um, if you got like weak pussy thumbs like this guy, it's hard for him to manipulate safeties on 1911s. With me, it's not that big of a deal. I just like a little bit more freedom of movement there. Yeah. And these are touchscreen compatible too, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 they're pretty solid. I like, like them. I, I would say, hey, look, still favorite gloves to, to date for me are um, the SKD Pigs. Yeah. Like, I mean, those things just kind of dominate. These would be top three. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'd probably put them in my three spot. I would say, hey, probably it's Pigs, it's the gun glove, and then these would probably take my next yeah, spot. That'd be my... That'd be my criteria um, too. So they're good, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're good. I like these, and again, thanks to the boys over at Type A. This was another roll of the dice product for me. Um, a company called Earmore sent in a message. They're like, hey, uh, what do you, you know, like test out some Ear Pro? And, and it was kind of like, 
unfortunately, my uh, existing ear pro I've run for a long time are just kind of finally taking a shit on me, and I don't know if that's something that warranty will cover or whatnot, but those ears are dead, and they're And nice they're not ears. a cheap set either. So. No, so that was a bummer, and I was like, oh, I kind of actually conveniently do need some ears right now, so yeah, fuck it, send them in, and, you know, I'll run them. So I would just tell you, look, these are the, uh, well, model-wise, um, M32 Tactical Mod 3. So these things run about 80 bucks, so they're not... I mean, I would, I would put that in a budget ear pro category. For electronic ear pro, I'd say that's budget mm. ear pro. Yeah. Um, and surprisingly good. Like, the, they're not, like, are they going to be as good as some, like, Ops Core or, I would say, Sordans, but that's what's crapping out on me right now. Um, like, I would say, no. I mean, they're more budget oriented ear pro. Like, I mean, you know, the band's going to be like, okay, it's nothing fancy. Like, they're not like gel cups that are going to be as comfy as the high end shit. But in terms of, hey, look, if you're looking for some ear pro that works, the sound quality is actually pretty good. You've been like, using them all day today, and you said they're working sound great. Sound quality's actually yeah. been pretty damn good. Um, so, you know, obviously electronic, just volume up and down, all that good jazz. But it sounds pretty good. There's, I would say they're a little bit more echoey than uh, mm. than a higher-end pair of ear pro. But again, be expected. what, 80 bucks? Yeah. You know, you're like, well, what'd you expect? You know, so... it. Pretty good. I mean, only time will tell how long do they hold up all that kind of shit. But in terms of a first impression, solid first impression. Walker, it was a pleasant surprise. Walker Ear Pro and Peltor has an entry level, and then that would be all around the same price point. So. Yeah, like 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 not bad. I, I mean, I, I can tell you, hey, with a limited uh, amount of time running these, they've been good to me thus far. And then I think final product. Before you get into that, I have one final product too that's been bothering me this whole time we've been sitting here. There's just a little crack pipe like hanging out. Here on the ground. Look at that. A little interesting. So, Did we leave that up here? Last time I don't here? smoke crack, do you? No. Oh, then yeah. No, it was just like on the ground, like buried. I just dug it up. A little crack pipe. That was crazy, man. Well, if anyone needs it. Yep, it's up here. Yeah, it'll be in my truck. That way when I get pulled over and they search my truck bed later, they'll be like, sir, crack pipe? And I'll be like, oh. The found big, it in the desert. The yeah, big, that's what the they big, all say. The big kid put it back These there. aren't my pants. Okay, <laughs> final product. Um, is a flashlight from Nightcore. So Nightcore, typically I associate with battery chargers. So most of the battery chargers that uh, ship with lights these days, whether it's like mod light, if you add in a charger, I think even cloud defensive, if you add in a charger, um, the charger that comes with is Nightcore chargers. I've got a couple Nightcore chargers and they're, they're, they're good. I think they're probably kind of like the gold standard for chargers these days. Apparently they actually make lights too. And another email that came to the inbox, like, hey, would you guys be interested in testing a light? And I was like, Sure. I reluctantly, I was like, sure, because I, I don't know. I'm a little picky on on lights. So they sent me this one. This is what the P20i, 1800 lumens. Um, it. I've been on a overall pretty pretty decent. The battery on this fucking thing is massive. Um, the size of the battery Holy on this shit, son of a bitch. <laughs> What's the runtime on that thing? Four minutes? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, the battery is absolutely enormous. Like, the batteries, I think it's 18650 maybe. I'm probably screwing that up. But basically, the ones that go in, like, a full-size mod light or cloud, yeah. this is, like, way bigger than those. Way to give bigger. you a frame of reference for those of you guys who have rechargeable lights. So it's a massive battery. <laughs> um and it is a really bright light. Uh, there's good and bad with this. The good would be, hey, look, it's rechargeable. So basically, you just plug in your little USB thing there. Yeah. That's cool. You don't even have to take the batteries out. You literally just plug in the light, and you're good to go. It comes with a cord. You do need a plug that will take a USB cord. But it does come with the the cord itself. Uh, things I don't like in life, strobe. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have zero interest in a strobe. That's just me personally. Fortunately, it's on a separate button than the actual uh, button that turns the light on. But hey, once it's on, if you hit the strobe button, it will get one step dimmer and then one step dimmer from there. So basically you get three power settings huh. um, and then you can power back up the full power. So um, there's that. Overall, pretty good. Yeah. I would like, hey, is it a combat light? No, it's not a combat light because it has it's too many things going on to be a combat like, yeah, yeah. For, for my preference right and there's no logical like really clean way to be able to reference this with a pistol mm, and, and yeah. activate it you can but it's going to be it's going to be tough so hey look i think there's a place for it it's not as a combat light 
tactical light like what the fuck does tactical mean you know like i i, I don't know so hey, look there's some pros and, and cons to it yeah like you could do a little bezel strike and there's some different things going on there overall pretty good i would say hey look i'm neutral to slightly favorable on it that's cool. where that's where i would i would say fair I'm enough on it. i think that is it my that's it i think that's so it couple products there you know if you guys like these videos maybe comment below about other products you'd like us to do like a rundown on but kind of as we accumulate a you know little what's the word stockpile of shit because we get sent shit and offered shit and I, we all buy shit and all that stuff we'll kind of do these little product dumps because again did any of this need its own 25 minute video no can we combine 10 things and make a 20 25 minute video yes and that's what you got and if you don't like it well watch another video the attitude. The attitude from the big one is real, everyone. I'm just saying. Um, that's why Finn's with me and not with you, because he's got a good attitude as well. Um, okay, everyone. Uh, stay safe. Stay off the streets. Um, whatever that means. Uh, but stay off the streets and um, don't do crack. All right. Gustavo, you're the man.